going on, Kim folk? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to tackle, tackle Ooh. the subject of lust and loneliness. And I, in my video on Tuesday, I kind of gave some tips on how I personally, really there were more tips on how I personally deal with lust and loneliness. I personally don't get lonely that often, but when I do, it's intense <laughs> and I have to like, for real, like battle. But I wanted to uh, talk about this. I think this, this is a really yeah. good topic, especially for a single people. We all battle it mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's just a, it's a tough one. So if you want to hear what we have to say on the subject, then keep on watching. Okay, so let's talk about the tips that I gave. Okay. <laughs> the first tip that I gave was just remember that this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. So I know for me personally, I don't know if you're like this. I, I don't get lonely very often. I mean, I have like some feelings like, oh, it'd be really nice to like have someone to share my life with yeah. or whatever and like go do things with on nice days and whatever. But I don't, I, don't, I enjoy my time alone. Yeah. I'm an introvert, as you guys know, and as you know too. <laughs> <laughs> but I also don't like the lust part. I don't, I don't get super lustful that much just because like I have a different perspective on we're, sex. We're very different. I, I, I am, <laughs> I'm a very sexual person. So when I'm in a relationship, I struggle hard. Yeah. But when I'm not in a relationship, I look at sex very different than most people. Yeah. <laughs> like people think I'm so weird when I say this, but all I think about when I see like good looking men, I think women are like, Oh dang, like he must mm -hmm. be good in it. Like I'm like, ew, <laughs> dirty penis. Do not touch me. Like I am Lord D community. Lord no <laughs> what is crawling through your blood. Oh and I am God, not going to so be your funny. semen receptacle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> All right, then. All right. So I don't struggle with lust. Like, I can't just have sex with anybody. Yeah. Because, oh, like, no. I just feel like, even if it's someone that I, like, just met and I'm like, oh, you're really, like, no, ew. Like, I don't know you. Like, yeah. ew. Just because I don't know. I, Lord, you could have just been with somebody earlier today. Right. Absolutely. So yeah. <laughs> that's You're why so I just, I don't struggle with it. If I, I struggle with like, sometimes I'm like, gosh, I just want to freaking punch a wall because yeah. it's so, it's so hardcore right now. But I don't think like, who can I die of? <laughs> yeah. Who can I call? I, so my struggle with lust and loneliness is, is a little different. So let me go with the loneliness part. I get lonely. I would say often. And my loneliness is more in terms of just as being um, a woman that with children, sometimes I'm like, I wish I had someone to share the emotional burden. No, I shouldn't say burden. My kids are not a burden. They are so awesome. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's a lot of weight that goes oh, into sure. parenting and especially if I'm trying to figure something out or there's some sort of difficulty that has, you know, come up, I'm like, man, I just, I wish I had someone to just share the, the stresses of life with, Absolutely. if that makes sense. Like someone who could just like hold me and we can reassure each other, Hey, we're in this together. It's going to be okay. Like that's the thing that, um, that can draw me to loneliness more so which makes complete sense that's a whole different ball game yeah right um so just depending on what stage you are in your life yeah. um you'll have different struggles but lust is a huge area of struggle for me i am a lust bucket <laughs> a bucket of You're lust, so <laughs> a lust um, bucket. <laughs> and well so when they talk about so here's not to get like super spiritual and deep or anything but i feel like definitely there's you know there's generational curses and there's things yeah. that pass down through the generations from the parent to the child so i think that there's things definitely in the backdrop of my family um where sex was just out of the container that it's intended to be in and it's just roaming around people just doing all types of things so i noticed even from a way before i even started having sex i noticed like a a longing for for sex and for sexual things and stuff like that way before I was ever in that situation. And how fortunately, old, like, you know I mean, I mean from think? when I was a little kid. Really? From when I was a little kid. Um, and 
like as I think back, you know, being an adult, as I think back, I'm like that that was nothing but the root of like sin from before my time that right. now it has gotten is in me yes. as a child. Um so I don't, how deep are we getting? You can get deep. Are we girl? getting deep? Oh Lord, that's deep. I mean, because when you think about I'm it, like you're, you're a kid, <laughs> you're, 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 uh, kids are sponges. Yes, yeah. they're Absolutely. observing behavior. They don't understand anything at this point, mm-hmm. but they're observing behaviors. They're paying attention to things. They're adapting yeah. and adopting the behaviors mm-hmm. and ways of thinking. So it makes sense. So if you're a parent, let's just say in your household, you. Are you know you've witnessed affairs, or you've or you, there's a parent that struggles with pornography, right. or there's a parent you know even back when Playboy's and stuff like that were like a big thing. Kids get into stuff like that. Yeah. Kids get into stuff. They see stuff they're not supposed to see, and then their view of sex becomes perverted. Right. So their minds, which are already not mature or really capable of digesting that information. They process it in a childlike way. Right. Um, so that was kind of like my experience. So I didn't know how to frame the things that I knew were going on or the things that I saw. My my parents, especially my dad, was really strict. So I never got into anything as far as acting on it, on right. those things. But I knew it was a matter of time, I said, because, boy, whenever I get, I used to be like, when I get old enough, Aww. I'm going to break somebody's back out or whatever, you know, I don't know. I remember being like a t- uh, like in middle school thinking that. Really? Like, ooh, whenever I, I start having sex, I'm going to put it down. Oh, Can you imagine? I have, <laughs> da- I have three kids, but I have two daughters, and I would die if I knew right. that they were thinking like that or, or having those types of, I would die. So as I got older, um, I didn't have, I didn't have sex until I went off to college, but yeah, it was, um, it was just all, I don't, I don't want to say all over the place because I'm kind of like shot a more shy person too. At that time I was not anymore. Um, but anyway, so I go through this whole journey. So now I'm an adult. I have wear and this is actually an abstinence ring. Oh, I wonder <laughs> which is why I wear I it on my wedding finger. It's red for the blood of Jesus. It reminds me of why he died, and I don't want to continue to live in sin. So I have been going, like walking along this journey for 15, 16 months, and it's definitely been the the most difficult but the most rewarding thing I've ever done so what I do when the lust starts to bubble for one let me tell you prevention is best (laughs) if you can prevent the lust from bubbling up that's really the best so I have to be very mindful for me about what type of music I listen absolutely. to and what I watch on TV. Absolutely. Music, people don't even, re- I don't listen to the words. The words are seeping into the spirit. Is so I'm sorry. It is so suggestive and I can just be like, Even the Ooh. beat is like, just like, <laughs> yeah. sensual. What? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you don't even realize it. Absolutely. So I had to really change what I was allowing in into my mind and into my you know they say you know your eye gate to your ear gates um and now I know you said you don't listen to a lot of like secular music I listen to R&B and stuff like that but when it starts getting to where it's like Suggest when it's like tank, like when we, right. you know, because that's like, like, oh, I'm like, to, like <laughs> if I do listen to, which is rare, I listen to like my my, my Pandora oh, station is Maxwell. Yeah, love me some Max. But then I start like that stuff makes you trip. Like I yeah. don't get lonely, but you listen to enough of that stuff, you about to get lonely. Mm, and just give it some time, lonely. you're gonna be yes. lonely. So I know that I still like to, li- you know, I like to listen to different kinds of music. So I will listen to. You know, Whitney Houston or Luther Vandross. Like, I'll listen to more so love, um, just good old-fashioned love songs than I will listen to, 
you know, peaches and cream. Oh, you know? that, that was the dream too. That, that was back the day. You know, I'm still stuck in the nine nines and the two thousand. I'm in the nineties and um, yeah, early two. But so yes, I as much as I can, I have to prevent it. But sometimes for me, that is still not enough. Yeah. Um. So I had to make a choice when I first became abstinent to whether or not masturbation would be a part of my journey. That's real talk. Um. If you know, we're just being honest. So in the beginning, I I did. Um, I'm like, I felt like it was fine. I'm like, I felt like it's a way for me to cope, you know, whatever. I didn't think anything of it. And as I started to, you know, be abstinent for longer and longer and, you know, still continue to walk with God and ask for the Holy Spirit, I started to be convicted about masturbation. Um, and I was like, okay, God, like, is there another way you want me to do this or... Because, and I think I've said it to you before, or maybe just like in a group setting, a conversation that we had, but anything that your mind goes to first before it goes to God is what you need to deal with. So if you're struggling with something and your first thought is, I need a drink. Your first thought is, I need to smoke. Right. Your first thought is, you know, if you're dealing with lust and and you know that you're trying to be abstinent, but you're like, okay, well, I'll, I'll just please myself then that is the what you need to deal with because yeah. you should be going to God Absolutely. first to help you with that issue. So he helped me to realize that. And to be quite honest, we are currently, God and I, we're still walking this journey of me trying to to surrender the need to like, okay, well, I just, I need to, like, I'm going to buckle under the weight right. of just needing to have like that release, right? Yeah. Um, but I feel like he is clearly telling me masturbation can't, if I'm going to grow to where God wants me to grow, it can't be a part of my journey. I have to die to anything that will be in the place of that. And I have to put everything into the container that God created to, to keep sex safe and pleasurable. And I just have to save it for my husband. And it's difficult. It's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah, my number two was <laughs> prayer. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, like asking the Lord to remove the emotions from you. Mm-hmm. You know, and and, the, and I said the enemy will use, like, those vulnerable times to make you, to make you change your mind about mm-hmm. making those decisions. Like, oh, no, it doesn't matter. It's just this one time. Yeah. Like, oh, it's okay. Like, don't, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. He'll forgive you. He'll forgive you. Which he will. Don't we say that so often? And I feel like that breaks God's heart. I think it does too. To know that we willfully go into stuff knowing that he'll forgive us. But we're like, I just, I can't see any any way around doing this. And I'll just repent afterwards. Right. Right. We've all done it. I know I've done it. it, You know, but I, I feel like that probably breaks God's heart for sure. Yeah. I think I, I struggle more with lust when I'm in a relationship, which has been a while. But the the last relationship was with you know the first relationship after that was the last Mm -hmm. guy I I talked to. Sometimes I mean I, I I want to honor God. Mm -hmm. I want to wait till marriage to have sex. But then there's a there's that part of me that's afraid to do that because my experience with my ex husband was yeah. so awful. Oh my god! Yeah. I'm like I don't ever want to go through that again, and I'm not trying to get divorced again. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to drive this car before I buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm 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 personally to be honest and transparent with you guys. Like I'm I'm not sure where I'm at with yeah. that because like. And I'm I'm been really dealing with the Lord. Like it, it, my heart wants to wait yeah. till marriage. I understand why God wants us to wait till marriage. I think it's it's a big deal. But I'm but at the same time, it's like oh I don't yeah. Know. I think because we know like Satan is like the deceiver. So any way that he can deceive us, and a lot of times it's in ways that we don't even know that's what's going on, he will. So I think in your situation, because you said your spirit was speaking to you so clearly about Kyle, there were just other things that happened as a result of that situation. So he should have probably should have never been your husband. Absolutely, yeah, 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 for sure. So the fact the the sex is almost like an after. 
Right. It, it, it was nothing with the root cause. But now, sure. because you've gone through that experience, now you're like, but this is what happened with that. You know what I mean? Right. You, you were never really meant to be with him. For sure. But now that experience has clouded your judgment of what you know in your heart that you want to do. Right. Which is just Satan's way of trying to convince me yeah. to have premarital sex the next time I get into a relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, tricky little devil. Mm. 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 <laughs> I can't stand you. I can't stand him. <laughs> But yeah, prayer for sure. Uh, like I know for me, because for me it's like at night, which I guess it makes sense. Like when I'm like laying in bed at night, so I need I have to get up out of the bed, and you know I'll have to pray or I'll have to put on worship music. I'll have to put on something that I know is going to snatch yes, my mind for sure from where it's at. Because when you start to feel that heat wafting up <laughs> from the nether region <laughs> you you need to identify it yes. right then and there and immediately switch gear switch gear which is number three i said when she didn't know okay. this was listen to a sermon or something motivational or worship music yeah. or something you have to get your mind out of you yes. cannot just brew in those thoughts if i let it go even a minute or two or three and then it's like yep. you hit the man for it. <laughs> screw it it's done it's, it's over done. i got <laughs> new batteries uh, and just forget it <laughs> <laughs> like yeah like i was supposed to, mine is not even That's like funny. calling someone yeah, I up either, but. mine mine is because I, i'm at this point where i'm like no i don't i don't want to give my body to another person right until i get married um but so mine is like, okay, do I go to God or do I just take matters into my own hands? So it's like, I really want to go to God. Um, because anytime you have a great struggle with something on the other side of that great struggle is a, a big purpose that God has right. for your life. Absolutely. And I see that and I want to get there. I don't want to, I don't want to be the reason that I don't get there, you know, uh, with, with what God has for my life. So I'm like, but God, I just want to do it my own way. Yeah. Your way is too hard. You take it too long. I'm about to be 40. Right. But God's <laughs> way produces the best result. It, it produces the best end result. It produces the most joy, the most fulfillment, the least amount of pain. When we do it our way, we yeah. get hurt. And I think a lot of times we don't realize like, what relationships really mean? I mean, yeah. just, I mean, one, it takes so much of your energy. So if you, like, if you're like me, which I feel like the biggest reason why I'm still single is because God obviously knows that he knows everything about me, but he knows <laughs> that if I were to have a relationship to invest in, I wouldn't do what he wants me to mm-hmm. do for me. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I will be so distracted because I'm just the kind of person that I'm really accommodating and I want to mm-hmm. help I want to help you and I want to that right. I'm going to just be so invested in that relationship that I'm not going to do what the Lord's telling me to do. Right. And it literally has taken up to now. I'm 36, going to be 37 years old in November, and I'm just now doing what I've been feeling like the Lord has wanted me to do for years now. Yeah. Because I was too afraid or I was too distracted. Mm-hmm. I was in, you know, different relationships that were really emotionally taxing and whatnot. And, like, God's like, you know what? No, you're not ready. Yet. And now I'm at a point where I'm, like, I'm okay with that. Like, after my divorce, like, something about divorce really just, <laughs> for me. It's, like, one of the most just, painful gifts that you could probably no get. No joke. That's, like, the most beautiful yeah. way to put it. Yeah. Because that's exactly what it was for me. Like, it shifted me out of that longing, that deep longing mm-hmm. for relationship because now I'm like, uh, did it. We'll yeah. never end up back in that <laughs> position. Like that feeling of being yeah. being in like trapped. You're trapped tied to someone who is like who like, horrible. Mm-hmm. Like that's a traumatizing feeling. Yeah. You can't get out. Not easily. So, like, I'd never, I don't want to do that again. Like, I, I don't ever want to get married until I know for sure that that's the person that God wants me to be with. So, I don't have that, like, deep longing to be in a relationship like I used to have. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, number four, my tip number four was journaling. Do you journal? 
I ha- I have journaled. Does I don't do it. You do it consistently. You do it I every try. day. Not every day. I've been. I stopped doing it for a long time, but I've been. I started it up again, and I yeah. realized it does really help a lot. Yeah, I've definitely done it. Um, I actually used to write poetry a ton. Really? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I have kind of gotten back to like kind of writing poetry or because my thing is I definitely am one of those women I don't want to say hopeless romantic but I definitely have like a strong romantic component to my personality and I sometimes I just need to have an outlet for that Absolutely. all of the things that I, I'm like when I get my husband here's what I would say to him I'll be writing vows <laughs> And I love that. But, but that's such a great yeah. way to deal with. But sometimes I just need an outlet for everything that is in my heart that I know that when God sends me my king, that I will be able to share yeah. with him. But sometimes I just get so full with that stuff that I just need to, to let it out. So, yeah, I will. I'll write it. Um, I'll write a poem. Or a lot of times for me, it's like I'll sing. Like, just anything that I feel like is just lets me externalize yeah. what's going on. I love that. I didn't so. know that. Girl. Girl. Oh. <laughs> Number five, I wrote, uh, go for a walk or work out. I'll go for a walk any day. I'm not working out. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. That's, so That's how come I have the pillow so y'all don't be all up in my muffin top. <laughs> but I am just not. And I'm sure it would be. I. I have tried to work out consistently a hundred times. I don't know why it's like, it just doesn't click for me, but I do love nature or like pretty scenery or like hearing the birds chirping yeah. in the morning. So I will walk and I walk a lot and it's probably the thing that keeps me from being, you know, that w- one cheeseburger away from just being like, <laughs> so it keeps me right underneath that. Um, Cause I try to get like my 10,000 steps in and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I don't work out. Yeah, I I like I love to work out. I struggle sometimes with consistency lately, but I've been a lot better about it. But I find it helps to like if you do like to work out or you want to work out, like it does help to kind of give you a form of release. Like yeah. you can really you can get your frustration out on the weights. Right. Like you and can I hear run people and... say that all the time, especially men. That's the easiest way for them to get through it. You didn't mention this, but I'll just kind of throw this in, yeah. like meditating. Yeah. Um. Which I know some people... Not the woo-woo, like... With being Christian, you know, we all be want to get so deep. Yo. But I'm just talking about, even the Bible says, you know, meditate on things that are good and lovely and of good report and things of that nature. So I just mean, like, the practice of really, like... Trying to reshift your thoughts, yes. like reorient uh, the the focus that you have currently in your mind. And for me, I do, like, I got to breathe through it and... I will think you can focus on like a scripture. You can focus on, you know, um, if you do like love nature or whatever, just whatever you can focus on that takes your thoughts away from where it currently is and just brings you back to center, brings you back to center. So meditation, I think, can help too. Absolutely. Are there any other tips that you would suggest? I think more so than anything, it's knowing that sex is not bad like you don't you shouldn't have a wrong opinion of sex um i know that we both like um pastor michael todd oh my gosh if you don't know him (laughs) i'm gonna try to i'm gonna link it in the description box you can check him out because he is legit he did a whole relationship series i think it was a part of the relationship series but he talked about the sex container and that's like an analogy that i really love uh, that i like to use um, God, there is the container is marriage um, that God designed sex for and within that container it's beautiful but outside of that container it can be very destructive Yeah. so sometimes and this is going to seem funny but if it helps you try it you know sometimes if I feel like I'm feeling very lustful it's like I'm being overtaken <laughs> I will literally I'll stop I'll take a breath and I will do my, I'll like pull, like figuratively, I will pull all of that energy out of my body. I'll put it into a little ball and then I'll throw it into my sex container (laughs) and I, I and I save it for my husband and I tell myself, God, there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with the way that you made me. 
just help me to to stay safe right like help me to do this in a way that you know is going to keep me safe because i know doing it the other way it leads to disaster Duh. so i want to keep everything that i love about me and i'm sure some lucky man is going to love that i'm a little hot pocket right <laughs> <laughs> You're so but funny. i want to keep it safe for <laughs> when the time comes for me to Absolutely. go ahead and be able to express all that in a way where god will be pleased I like that little <laughs> hot pocket. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, we're going to be filming another video when I get into a relationship. I'm sure I'll have a whole lot more to say. <laughs> right. Once but, I actually find right. someone that Who I want to do the do with. Right. Then, then I might be singing a whole I'm different be, song. I will be singing a whole different tune. I'm going to be, my prayer closet is going to be Yo, visited. I'm going to be in there all the time. Frequently. No more clothes. Like, yes. I'm be in the dark in the closet <laughs> praying. <laughs> right. <laughs> Having kids helps. You don't have kids, so no. you have nothing but your own personal yeah. time. You know, kids are the best cockwalkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't have unlimited <laughs> amounts of free time to just do whatever, you know, my body would have me do because I have um, lots of other responsibilities yeah. that take up a lot of my time. So that that is actually a good distraction. I bet. So I'm I don't know what I would do if I did if I had like the desire to be in a relationship really strong, it would be different. But I'm just I'm good over here right now. <laughs> Although I do have I do have I'm not gonna make it seem like I don't ever have moments because sometimes I'm like, yo, like dude yeah i get really frustrated sometimes yeah but i'm just at a place where i'm so focused right now that mm -hmm. i don't i don't have a strong desire to, to divide my energy yeah into a relationship so and of course they talk about that in the bible so when, if we're going if we're transitioning now from lust back to the topic of loneliness um when you're single your attention you know your attention does not have to be divided when you're single, you can focus on God. Yeah. And that really is the best way to overcome loneliness. And sometimes people hear you say that and say, okay, focus on God. So you just right. want me to sit around and be like, oh, Jesus. No, it's ask God what would he have for your life right. and be dedicated to that purpose. So you have, you know, shifted a little bit with your content yes. and you've kind of come into the spot where... God's designed you to be with your topic Tuesdays and Real Talk Thursdays. So find what God is telling you about what you need to do with your life and how to just be a full person and focus yeah. on that. Because yeah. that takes a lot of atten it does. Uh, um, attention and energy and it, it takes it you away from just having an idle mind just waiting for right. some man to come along and save you. It also gives you a level of excitement because yeah. like, I mean, this is so fulfilling to me. And, like, when you're just doing the regular day-to-day, -day, you get up, you mm -hmm. go to work, you come home, you watch TV, you go to bed, you do it all over right. again. And I was there. I remember I wrote a poem about mm -hmm. that, like, just doing the same thing every day. Like, this is, like, back in 2002. I wrote a poem about just doing the same old stuff every day. So boring. This can't be it is yeah. basically what it was. Like, this can't be it. But I think right. that people are so comfortable in their mediocrity right. that nobody wants to think outside of their little box mm -hmm. and they get stuck with that and they're like oh when I get married my life will be more exciting right <laughs> and that's how that's that's what you but no. when you focus your mind on what God wants you to do and a lot of times I mean it takes time but you're gonna have to run into a lot of different things like trial and error like mm -hmm. oh this God put this on my heart so I'm gonna do this and a lot of times like God will put little things on your heart at a time yeah and it, it's not gonna necessarily be what your destiny is but yeah. it's just a way to prepare you for it right and then he's gonna give you something else and okay it's time to leave this now I'll go to this and I'll go to this and I'll go to this and he's preparing mm -hmm. you for the bigger thing but if you never step outside of your box to go do this right. little prompting that the lord has put on your spirit then you're never gonna be you're never gonna take the steps in order to get to yeah his actual like it's all your destiny it's just you know little little steps little steps little steps little yeah. steps and boom you know but and don't forget you can be lonely in a relationship oh oh my like, gosh like we, we have to remind ourselves that the cure for loneliness is not having someone in your life 
the cure for loneliness is working on yourself. Absolutely. And 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 feeling fulfilled in the Lord. Like it sounds yeah. cliche, but it is real. Mm-hmm. Be- you're so right. I mean, I've been in so many relationships where I just felt so alone and it's just right. so emotionally yeah. exhausting. And you end up feeling empty. Yeah. Because they're not they're supposed to be filling each other up. And if, if you're doing all the pouring and they're doing all the receiving, you're just talking about this earlier, right. then you end up with nothing, mm-hmm. and you just wish you were alone. <laughs> right. But then you're too afraid to like, break I up with them. I can have nothing by myself, thank you very much. Right. <laughs> I feel like that is a worse feeling than being lonely alone. Yeah, absolutely. So just continue to focus on yourself, on God's purpose for your life. Dig into the Bible. Ask God for the Holy Spirit to walk with you. And the lust and loneliness will be there, but you'll be able to overcome it. Absolutely. Yeah. You can do it. You can do it. But we'll definitely talk more about this type of stuff because I feel like I feel like this is something that churches don't a lot of churches yeah. don't talk about. That's why I love Michael Todd too, because he he digs on this subject because yeah. he had he used to be addicted to pornography and he's very open mm-hmm. and candid about that. And I respect that because I feel like a lot of people, even women, yeah, are addicted to porn. I personally have never liked it. Yeah. But I know a lot of people really just struggle with not mm-hmm. looking at it and um, I just, if you list, watch the His Relationship series, because I feel like it'll really, really help a lot of you. Yeah. I know we're not the only ones that need help. Right. I know. Don't let us be the only ones that need right. help. Right. <laughs> don't be acting. Don't be, if you saw the Judgmental Christian video. Right. Don't be one of them. Okay. Because, you know, we all struggling. <laughs> yeah. But it's called Relationship Goals yeah. is the series. It's Pastor Michael Todd, T-O-D-D, Transformation Church. You can find it on YouTube. Yeah. And I'll link it in the description box so you guys can go check it out. But it will bless you. (laughs) It will bless you. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, comment, share, subscribe, and help me to continue growing my family. See you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.